Washington Journal continues. And we're back with Congressman Kevin Brady, Republican of Texas. I mentioned Ways and Means Committee member, Vice Chair of Joint Economic Committee, but you are also a conferee for this payroll tax cut extension uh, negotiations. And we've got some news uh, coming out of the Republicans, House Republicans yesterday, ready to go ahead with extending it for 10 months and taking offsets off the table. Yeah, I think this is a strategic decision. We had hoped uh, to have better negotiations, frankly, with, uh, with Democrats in Congress to fill that hole in Social Security because we think it's real and we think we ought to address it now, especially since Social Security is borrowing, I think uh, last year, $142 billion, mainly from other investors and foreign investors to pay Social Security today. It's running permanent cash deficits in the future, so we thought it was appropriate to fill that gap. But what we're really concerned about is making sure there's not a tax increase come March 1st. And so as a backup plan, we filed a bill to extend it for the full year without those offsets and to focus on getting some of the unemployment reforms and the uh, Medicare solutions we're hoping for. Do you think you have the votes of your rank and file Republicans, those especially who came in in 2010 on the notion that things have to be paid for? You know, I think at the end of the day, yes, um, although it won't be easy. And I think part of the argument clearly is going to be uh, we want to focus on this president and his record uh, heading into November, not on the payroll tax issue. And because we believe extending tax relief shouldn't be paid for, we believe that in, in tax cuts, we believe that in alternative minimum tax, um, I think it fits in with our philosophy there. How many votes do you think on the Republican side you might lose? You know, I don't this? know. There'll be some who had already voted against it. And there's some who, who just believe from an economic standpoint, the payroll tax doesn't deliver much bang for the buck, uh, but um, I think at the end of the day it is extended for the full year. Uh, and I think at the end of the day unemployment benefits and a solution for our Medicare providers at home will be extended as well. For those viewers who will want to watch on C-SPAN, when do you think that debate comes to the floor? When will there be a vote? My guess is this week at some time. I don't know uh, when the timing uh, is set for. I know that we'll be meeting later today after Republicans all arrive back in town. We'll be having a meeting to discuss sort of the particulars. Republicans will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me ask you this. Here's the Wall Street Journal. One critique of this plan of not having offsets is the loss of revenue could hurt the Social Security program, which is funded by the payroll tax. Another concerns the temporary nature of the measure, since many lawmakers contend that a fundamental overhaul of the tax code is what is really needed. They're exactly right. You know, I think these temporary fixes just aren't having a bang for the buck. This is actually then the why do fifth. It? Well, this is what's frustrating. This is actually the fifth sort of consumer demand driver Congress has passed this decade, including the, the two rebates uh, under President Bush. None of them really have the bang for the buck. It's, it's permanent tax relief and a permanent structure that counts. Uh, so, and that's what we're pushing for today. House Ways and Means Committee has already uh, outlined uh, one uh, tax reform on the business side, and House Republicans in our budget will outline a individual tax uh, uh, reform as well. So we think we're headed the right direction, but we need some partners on this. So you don't believe in it, but yet you're going to support this? Well, we believe we shouldn't be raising taxes. Now that it's in place, we shouldn't be uh, imposing a tax increase on workers March 1st. That we know. We think ultimately that needs to be replaced with tax cuts of equal or greater value that doesn't uh, divert from the Social Security revenue stream. All right, let's get to the 2013 budget proposal by the president. The right. Washington Post says this this morning on their editorial page. The president is at least offers a serious, if inadequate, effort to put the econo economy on a sustainable path. His budget recognizes, as Republicans will not, that spending cuts and revenue increases will be needed. It does not slash the social safety net or eviscerate the spending, for example, on research and infrastructure essential to sustaining a vibrant economy. At the same time, the Obama budget recognizes that the recovering economy still needs help, not the contractionary fiscal shock that would come from letting all the Bush tax, tax cuts expire. You know, I think they uh, missed the mark in two areas. One, I think this budget is very poor for the economy uh, that the president's proposed. And thankfully, uh, like last year, where the Senate, including Democrats, rejected 97 to 0. My guess is it uh, holds the same fate this year. It's bad for the economy. It double taxes American companies competing successfully overseas. It drives our energy manufacturing uh, out of America, it increases taxes on a number of the job traders. But what worries me is that if it were to be adopted 
Uh, I think this budget virtually guarantees a further downgrade of America's credit rating because it doesn't deal with the structural deficits. Social Security and Medicare are, face serious challenges. We all know that. We know what needs to be done uh, to address that. The president punts on all that. I guess it's an election year. He doesn't want to address them, but Republicans in our budget are going to address those structural programs to make them solvent for the long term. Gene Sperling, uh, the White House National Economic Council Director, he responded to that criticism yesterday. I want to show you what he had to say and get your reaction. I think what's significant, and I really want to stress this and Jeff has stressed this, is when we put out a budget, it has $600 billion of entitlement savings, and we have already agreed to uh, the most significant discretionary spending cuts uh, in decades. Um, the discretionary number for non-security savings in this budget, 2.5% of GDP, I know that's a little boring, but that's as low as it's been since 1964. It's been that low in other years, but it's as low as it's been. So in other words, we have put forward significant entitlement savings. The president's taken on sacred cows uh, uh, on, on our side uh, and put forward entitlement savings that you have not seen detailed in a president's budget before. And he puts out an amount of revenue, which is, uh, you know, as Jack Lou said yesterday, equivalent in the overall package of what's been done here, $2.50 of spending and interest cuts for every dollar of revenue. Let me challenge that last point as yep. a starter. Uh, they claim $2.50 of uh, spending cuts for every dollar in, in increased tax revenue. But we took a look at the numbers uh, late yesterday afternoon. In fact, it's just the opposite. It's $1.20 of tax increases for every dollar of spending cuts. And what they did was essentially they started their baseline last year with the uh, sequesters and the spending cuts that we've already put in place. And they count spend or interest savings as spending cuts. And, if you were a math teacher, you'd say that's cheating. Uh, the truth of the matter is, this has the high, locks in the highest level of spending we've seen as a country. The tax increases it has in place are very damaging to the economy, and it ignores Medicare and Social Security. The savings that Gene Sperling related to are the cuts to providers in Obamacare. They do virtually nothing to put Medicare back on a solvent path, and that's what our credit rating agencies are going to look at most closely. All right, I want to get to phone calls here to right. talk uh, to let our viewers talk to you directly about uh, the president's budget and the Republican response okay. to it. Also, want to let our viewers know on this whole payroll tax cut extension debate that the president uh, is going to say something this morning around 10:40 a.m. Eastern time uh, to try to continue to push Congress to extend the payroll tax cut holiday and the unemployment insurance. Through the end of the year, the president will be joined apparently from the White House by Americans who have shared what a $40 paycheck means to them and who would be affected by it if Congress does not act. Um, so let's get to David, a Republican in St. Joseph, Missouri. Go ahead, David. Thank you. I just want to say that this is another example of our president and his party uh, going out of their way. This budget will not accomplish anything except raise more taxes and will fail, it doesn't do any real cuts that are needed, and it's just to create a problem so they can come in and have more government <coughs> control over things, just like the, just like the uh, Fast and Furious thing was a scam to destroy our Second Amendment rights, and we just had some liberal uh, 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 attorney general bragging about the scam that they did with this so-called uh, settlement for the evil banks. Okay, David, going down a different road here, so let me jump in. You seem to agree with David's first part of his comments. Is there, is there, is there any way, or on what might you compromise on increasing taxes? Do you think at some point, somewhere, we need to increase taxes, as well as cut spending? You know, I think the balance is increasing revenues and cutting spending, not, not increasing taxes. There I think there's common ground. For example, we know we're in a game-changing environment in energy. We know we have uh, 60, 70, 80 billion dollars of energy revenues that are left off the table because we're not fully accessing. There is one, there's a perfect compromise on how to create jobs, uh, how to bring more energy security and generate revenues for the Treasury. Yes, there are some uh, areas of compromise there. Phoenix, Arizona. Gregory, Democratic caller, you're next. 
Good morning. Uh, uh, Representative, uh, do you have a, a Brady a Brady Care uh, program somewhere in the back of your head? So I hear you guys talk about Obamacare, Obamacare, Obamacare. So you don't want to spend any money. So your children won't be saddled with debt. But yet, it's like you want to have uh, to take the poor kids, teach them how to be janitors, and take the rich kids, teach them how to run the country. You know, you guys ought to be glad that Obama's president. Otherwise, y'all still be doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, Congressman. <laughs> well, actually, there is a Brady Care plan. It's it's the Republican plan. We didn't get a chance to offer it last go around. They shut out any alternatives, any other ideas for the president's health care plan. But what we did was focus, instead of, uh, of greater access and pushing people onto Medicaid uh, and imposing mandates, we focused on trying to make health care more affordable because I think that's the key reason people who work for small businesses can't afford it. I think that's the reason people with pre-existing illnesses can't afford it. So we focused more on lowering that cost first and then moving to expanding the coverage uh, for the next step. We were taking a do it right first, take the next step and do it right, and uh, we think that's still the right solution. We want to, are going to aggressively seek to repeal the President's health care plan and replace it with what we think are, is a better alternative. Georgetown, Virginia, Mary, an independent caller. You're on there with Congressman Kevin Brady, Republican of Texas. Hello. Morning. I, I just, you know, it, there's just several things that have come up since I've been here waiting, but, you know, it's ICE Director John Morton and Secretary Napolitano has repeatedly said that they need more money to do their job. You know, right now, you know, uh, the CBO said there was $100 billion that was paid out in unemployment. That don't include the last round. But yet we have 8 million illegals working jobs. You know, get millions of our people back to work. Get them out. And in addition to the last caller's comments, he fails to realize that Obama admitted, quote, illegals go to the ER and we pay for it, unquote. So Obama is not doing his job. Okay, Congressman. Well, Mary, I agree. I, I don't think we're putting enough resources uh, on the border. Uh, I, we still have only operational control of about half of our, our border, uh, which is a huge mistake. And I think the president's budget cuts where states have stepped up to uh, detain those who've been arrested uh, in order for them to go through the judicial system. He's uh, cutting payments to states who step forward to do that. I think that's a big mistake. We'll go to Arab, Alabama. Linda, Republican caller. Yes, good morning. Morning. Um, I just wanted to say that President Obama and the Democrats don't realize that when you raise taxes on the rich, you're raising prices on everyone because the wealthy corporation owners, they don't eat that tax. They pay it. The government gets that money, and the rest of us pay more for goods and services. So whenever the president says he wants to raise taxes on the rich, he's raising prices on all the rest of us because we're the ones that pay for that. And I don't understand why nobody makes that point, and I don't understand why the Democrats don't get that. Well, Linda, I think you've got a valid point. At the end of the day, corporations pass those two things happen. They either pass the prices along to consumers, that's you and me, or they stop doing what they're taxed to do. In, in this sense, it's job creation that's seeing the highest uh, taxes, I think, under this budget. You're seeing uh, double taxation of American companies that are successful in competing around the world, where so many of the new customers are at. We're going to actually double tax and make it harder for them to compete. That creates, unfortunately, uh, when they're doing it right, it creates jobs. But when we tax them, they're going to stop creating those jobs. So economically, I think this budget is, uh, is on the wrong track. Let me throw an email into the mix. Would you favor a financial transaction tax to fund shortfalls in Social Security and health care? No, I think we need to. No, because it doesn't, um, uh, a new tax doesn't address the structural problems with Social Security and Medicare. The truth of the matter is, that we've got to make some reforms long term for the next generation, some reasonable reforms in both those programs. And unless you do that, which again the president simply ignores in this budget, uh, you're not going to make it solvent for every generation once and for all. And that's what we're seeking to do. Continuing on taxes, Joan says, I heard you say that Republicans think tax cuts should be paid for, the payroll tax cut. 
Uh, when did Republicans have this change of heart? It is certainly not a philosophy the Republicans held when they were in charge and they did nothing to pay for anything, tax cuts, wars, and Medicare prescription plan. Well, the distinction is that uh, the payroll tax holiday is really uh, diverting dollars not from the general fund, but from Social Security. And not from Social Security trust fund, not from your, the nest egg, supposedly, that's been built up. This is real revenue to seniors today. So we're having to go outside the country, borrow money to fill in this hole and pay our Social Security checks today. We think that's a mistake, but apparently uh, uh, we've not carried the day in that argument. We think long term this is damaging to Social Security, but if this direction the President wants to go and Democrats, um, on Social Security, uh, we're not going to stand in the way of extending that payroll tax cut. So this is a recognition by Republicans that you lost the political battle back in December? You know, I think uh, at that point we did not get the message, I think, to the American public that this money comes from Social Security. So today, I think the argument uh, strategically uh, is to allow this to go forward, uh, to focus on, we think, uh, future tax uh, cuts. Uh, and to get back to the real issue, which is we are spending and taxing ourselves into real trouble. So you just want this off the table? Well, at some point, uh, it's got to be resolved, and, and the House is the only body that's actually passed a full year extension of the payroll tax cut and unemployment. Here's a, a tweet from Freelancer. Representative Brady, if raising taxes uh, to pay for the cost of government, um, raising taxes to pay for the cost of government, if you're opposed to that, what's the GOP, GOP plan? Not to pay the bills? That's not fiscal responsibility. Well, he's exact, uh, that person is exactly right. Here's the problem. Uh, this president's already signed legislation increasing taxes by over $600 billion in his first two years. How much that went to reduce the deficit? Not a dime of it. And the fear is, going forward, increased taxes will do exactly the same. All it will do is sustain a higher level of spending that isn't sustainable. So our approach is, look, uh, we need a balance between new revenues through economic growth and spending cuts over the long term, including addressing Social Security and Medicare. I don't know how any responsible politician says we can get our financial house in order without addressing those two programs, yet the president did that in his budget. And on that point, I just want to show our viewers the front page of the Washington Times this morning. Uh, Social Security reserves forecast to run dry in 20